Hey guys, my name's Kian Hushman, and in today's video, we're going to be checking out the brand new Archetype Tim Henson plugin from Neural DSP. Let's have a look. So this plugin has been in the works for a very long time and a lot of people knew that this was coming but we just weren't sure when. If you guys aren't familiar with Tim Henson, Tim Henson is one of the two guitarists of the band Polyphia. Polyphia in my opinion is one of the most inspiring bands when it comes to modern guitar music and it's definitely paving the way for the new era of guitarists. Tim Henson and the whole Polyphia sound in general is something that a lot of people have been chasing after for a very long time with his use of multi voices and vocoders and stuff like that. So Neural DSP have teamed up with Tim Henson to bring you guys the exact tones that you're after. So let's see what it sounds like in a mix, but before we do that, if you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear. And if you want to see more of this stuff, definitely think about subscribing. If you guys want to support me directly, you can get the tabs, stems, DIs, drum tracks, all that good stuff for the demo song that you're about to hear on my Patreon. You can also check out all my affiliate links, all that stuff will be in the description below. But enough of that, how does it sound in a mix? So here it is, the Archetype Tim Henson plugin. Right now I'm going through a Mishman Sewer Signature Jackson. Um, this is the new model with the Evertune built in it, um, and it's in drop A. And this is what the plugin sounds like when you load it up. Very soft, very sombre, but you can get away with a lot of different sounds. So if you're familiar with the Neural DSP kind of plugins, you will notice that it's a very similar layout. So you go input here, um, your noise gate, input mode, whether you want stereo or mono, all your different presets here, and I have made my own presets. Um, you got your output control there, that's universal for the whole plugin. On the top pane here, you have all the different pages within the plugin. So you've got your pre-effects pedals here in a boost, compressor, and overdrive. Then you have the amps themselves, which you can switch with the bottom tabs here. So this is the hottest amp, this is the clean amp, and this is the acoustic sim. You then have a dedicated cab section across the whole plugin and each cab is relative to its own head so you can't mix and match like some of the other archetype plugins from Neural DSP. The acoustic sim doesn't have a cabinet at all it's just mainly just the sim um, but between the cleanerish amp and then the slightly overdriven amp um, the cabs are kind of just done for you which is nice. You then have the multi-voicer which is definitely one of the main selling points of this plugin it gives you that signature Tim Henson and Polyphia sound there's so much you can do with this you can assign it to MIDI as well um, you can select the exact root note um, the mode that you're playing in all the different voicings and stuff for each chord like it's very 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 in depth and there's no way that I could cover this whole thing in this one video but I will go through it there's definitely a lot you can do with this and it's one of the coolest things that Neuro DSP has put in a plugin in a very long time you then have a nine band EQ just to shape your tone a little bit and then of course the effects where you have your chorus delay and reverb and the reverb also has a shimmer which is very very cool <laughs> Before we get stuck into the presets that I made, let's go through the multi-voicer. So once we have the multi-voicer engaged, as you can see there is your root note in the middle here and then there's four different intervals that you can pick or you can set them to semitones as well in a chromatic fashion. So to get it going, what you do is you pick your root note here and you pick your mode, whether it's major, minor or chromatic. And then if you want to get more in depth, you can select the exact chord that you're playing in. You can also control how unified those intervals are with one another. So if you want it to be a little bit more spaced out, you can kind of just go like this. If you want it to be all kind of within one note, you can set it all the way up here. I'm just going to leave it at 0.5 for now. Um, same thing with the width. If you want it to be really wide and get that really wide stereo image, you can adjust that as well. You also have adjustments for tone and the overall output of the multi-voicer itself. 
And as I mentioned before, you can select the exact interval that you want for each voicing. So at the moment, these are the default, so I'm not gonna touch them, but as you can see, I can pick any interval that I want relative to that scale. You can also adjust the level of each interval. So as you can see, the main DI, which is your main input, is at like zero dB, is that main volume. And then voices two and three are at negative six, and then voices one and four are at negative 12. So it's kind of just building into one another. From there, you can also set the pan, and then you also have this width control here. I don't know much about music theory, but if memory serves me well, this should be a A minor pentatonic scale. And then from there, if I wanted to go A sharp, just a fret higher. Again, if I wanted to do C. So you kind of just need to pick the key of whatever you're playing in, adjust some stuff accordingly, and then kind of just fit your playing around it, and you can get some really, really cool sounds out of it. There is so much stuff you can do with this multi-voicer, it's kind of crazy. Um, you could probably make a whole video just on the multi-voicer itself and all the things you can do with it. Um, I have made a preset using it, but it's a little bit unorthodox. Um, and I've basically set it up so that whatever my root note is, whatever I'm playing, it kind of shifts it down one semitone and puts it in unison. So it kind of just sounds disgusting. So if you want those really disgusting leads and your breakdowns and stuff like that, you could definitely get away with it using this. Moving on to the next preset, Almost Modern Metal. Now, by the name, you can probably tell, I did try my absolute hardest to get a Modern Metal sound out of this preset, and I'm pretty sure I got it 99% of the way there. <laughs> To get a little bit of a cleaner sound, you can take the boost off and it kind of just sounds a little bit more string picky. It might not get you as much saturation as you find in a typical modern metal tone, um, but taking the boost off does really help with string definition. A couple of little tricks to drive the amp a little bit more. Um, I did turn the compressor on, but I put compression all the way off and put the level up. So I'm basically just increasing the input going into the front of the amp or into the overdrive. Then with the overdrive, level all the way up, um, tone just a little bit above five and then drive typically higher than I normally put it, but I did feel like um, the drive out of the overdrive as opposed to the drive out of the gain in the amp itself um, did fit a little bit more of a modern metal context. The actual controls on the amp itself are very, very standard. Um, so gain just a little bit above five, bass a little bit below five, same with mids. Um, treble just pushed up a little bit, presence just below five. Master I've put down to like 2.53, and then level I've just pushed up a little bit to compensate for that master. With the cab, I'm using a 57 mic and a ribbon 160. I thought that this was the best combination for that typical sound out of this cab, um, with the 57 being more prominent in the mix. As you can see, I have dipped down the ribbon 160 just a little bit over here. And then last but not least, just some EQs. So dipping out some low mids and lows um, and then kind of compensating by pushing up around 2k and 8k just to bring some more life out of the guitars but then dipping out some 4k to get rid of that super typical um, 4k fizziness <laughs> Moving on to the next preset, Just Sit and Solo. So as you can tell by the name, Just Sit and Solo, it's a very reactive preset. I have not turned the compressor on, so if you do play a bum note, you will notice it. Overdrive pedal on, driving the gain on the amp just a little bit just to grab those single notes, because um, we're not playing chords with this preset, we're playing single um, higher register notes, so you really want to grab that gain. Um, bass, dipping mids, pushing treble, um, again, dipping presence just a little bit, pushing master all the way up, because why not, and then compensating for level. Using a Ribbon 160 and a Ribbon 121 just to kind of even out the tone a little bit. Usually I'd go for a Dynamic 57, um, but because we're soloing and because we're playing on the higher register, um, it can get a little bit ear picky with the 57. So just kind of rounding it out and compensating by using a 160 and a 121. And then adding back some brightness in the EQ and just kind of taking out some of that low stuff that we don't really need to hear anyway. The only effect that's on in this preset is the reverb. I have not turned the delay on. Um, the reverb is 50-50 with 50-50 decay, um, letting pretty much almost all of the low end through 
through, um, kind of taking out some of the high end, no shimmer. And basically, just like it says, all you got to do is sit there and solo. <laughs> Who says you can't bend on a never tune? Moving on to the next preset, saturated space. So this is like a very airy, spacey type of preset for your ambient leads and stuff like that. Compressor on, I'm um, again using the third amp. I really like this amp a lot. This is probably my favorite in the whole plugin. Similar sort of thing happening with the cab section here. As you can see, I'm using the 160 and the 121 again. And then going to the effects page, I pretty much have everything turned on. Chorus is 50-50, delay is engaged and reverb is on as well with shimmer. For the delay, I'm using the normal mode. So you can choose between having a ping pong delay, a wide delay or a normal delay. At the moment, I'm using a normal one and you can select the type of delay as well so whether you want diffusion vintage digital or modern and you can set the amount that that actually influences each delay repeat so for example right now it sounds like this if i wanted to drive it a little bit more so it kind of just squashes every delay going to modern or going to diffusion So it kind of just disappears into the space, which is very cool. And then with reverb, pretty wet, um, lots of decay, cutting out some of the low end and then really taking out a lot of the high end, um, just so it kind of sounds really nice and airy and not too shimmery. The next preset is Tele Flavored Jam, so I'm going to switch guitars to my Tele. So as you can probably tell, this preset is very inspired by that typical like Midwest emo um, math rock kind of tone. Compressor engaged to really grab those tapping notes. I'm overdrive enabled. I'm using the second amp and I am using channel one. So there are two channels within this amp. You can use channel one. <laughs> Or you can use channel 2. Channel 2 is definitely more twinkly, although I feel like it's a little bit more hollow, which is why I like using channel 1. Going on to the cap section, I'm using a Dynamic 57 on the left and a Ribbon 121 on the right, and they're both set at the exact same level. EQ I have not touched, and the only effect that I have on is a really, really, really tiny amount of reverb. And then last but not least, the acoustic amp sim. So let's just go into the acoustic amp and turn off all the effects for now. Within the acoustic sim, the controls are a little bit more simplified. So of course you got your bass, mids, treble presence. You also have a blend control, so you can blend how much of that acoustic sim is actually coming through. Um, just for argument's sake, I'm gonna put it all the way up to 100 so you can really hear what it sounds like when it's being that acoustic sim. On the neck pickup,
Bridge pickup. So there you have it, the archetype Tim Henson from Neural DSP. As you guys can probably tell, this is a little bit different from what Neural DSP usually offers with their plugins, um, but it's a welcome change for me because there are some things in here that you're not going to get in any other Neural DSP plugin, such as the acoustic simulator over here, or definitely the multi voice and vocoder over here. I know a lot of people have been trying to figure out how to get that signature polyphia sound for a very long time, myself included, and I definitely feel like you can do so with this plugin now. So what do you guys think about this brand new plugin from Neural DSP? I personally really like it. I can definitely see myself using the vocoder for a bunch of different purposes. And finally, I know a lot of us have been asking for it for a very long time. We can finally get that polyphia tone in our bedrooms. As I mentioned before, if you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you wanna see more of this stuff, definitely think about subscribing. Again, if you guys wanna support me directly, you can get the tabs, stems, DIs, drum tracks, all that stuff for the demo song that you heard in the beginning of the video. And you can also check out all of my affiliate links. All that stuff will be in the description below. Massive thank you to everyone at Neural for letting me try this one early. I really do appreciate it. And massive thanks to all my Patreons. Without you guys, I definitely will not be in the position to make videos like this early. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.